if the answer that the user gave is only HR, it doesn't have anything else than those two letters, it is going to be considered correct, even though it, the, the user really didn't answer. If, if the answer is one, he, yeah, it is going to be correct. Now, here's the deal. If you want the if you want a specific answer, it is easier if you use this version, which is with the strings. If you use this, the contains, it might be, it might not be the solution for a, for a particular problem because then the user might get away with just simply putting part of the answer. I'm not sure if you get the idea, but basically, um, if you want a strict answer, this is better here on the top. Now, the fourth the fourth question, everything else goes as usual. The fourth question um, is kind of a trick question and the point <coughs> of it is that I just want the user to input something. You can input a name, you can input a number, and that is actually again the problem with um, you have to really think about how you want your if and else statements to work. In this case, the, um, the question is a little bit tricky. Um, the person, the user, just simply have to input his own name. What's the name of the driver in this particular question? Um, the driver in this particular question is referring to the user itself, himself. So he just simply have to put his name. Now, the way that I'm doing here is that I just check if that variable is empty or not. Remember that the if is going to return false only if a variable is equal to zero or if equal, or if the variable is empty, completely empty. Empty. Now, if you put a name, if you put a number, if you put anything on that variable, it is going to return true. Now, sometimes that might not be a good solution because in this case, if you put a dot in that, you know, as as your name, it is going to return correct because the variable is set. So I just wanted to illustrate that it is very important that you think about your logic. You have to have a very good logic on how you want your if and else statements to work, because if not, it can happen that the users can bypass um, some settings on your program or um, there there might be some situations that you did not think about when you created the program that it can just be solved by you thinking correctly when you're creating your if and else statements. So um, at the end, we have a question number five. Um, and as you can see, I'm just checking if answers equals two apples. Now, this particular line in here, what it wants, uh, what I want to show is that as I'm not using parentheses here, this particular part after the equal sign is treated as a string, so you do not need the quotation marks. If you put quotation marks there, you're going to have problems. So basically, make sure that you are aware of if you are inside an expression or not, because only inside expressions you need the quotation marks. So now that we did all the questions and now that we set the correct to whatever it was, how many times the user made correct answers, now it's time to do something with those numbers. So um, at the end, this particular part of the code does not depend on any of the if, if and else statements above. This is going to run all the time at the end. And what it does is that it assigns um, using the colon equals operand, correct times 20. So whatever correct is, which is how many times he made a correct answer, which can be 5, it can be 3, 2, whatever number it is, it's going to multiply it by 20 and it's going to store the result on the variable called store. Now, here comes the if statement again. If score between 0 and 60, now we're going to place a message box here which is going to have a message and as you can see I just simply closed the, the quotation marks here and now put the name of the variable score there and open the quotation marks again to continue with the message. That allows me to have a variable number here. So if the mess, if the person had a score of 20, he will get um, a message box say 20, but if somebody else has a, a message box with 40, he's going to have 40 in there. So. Um, this allows me to have a very personalized message box and then I go ahead and check if score equals 80 
then I have a different message box here. And if score is more than 80, then I'm just going to say, perfect, you scored 90 or 100, which are the only possible solutions to this points. And that's impressive. And then the thing is that I wanted to show that you can do this. You can say if, and then you can say else if, which what it does is that it just simply retests whatever you're testing at the moment. So for example, if you are testing score, then you're testing it again. And you can do that as many times as you want. Um, after that, it is the end of the of the script. It just simply says, thanks for participating in this quiz. And basically, I'm going to give you guys this particular code so you can study it more, indeed, you know, more um, uh, slow if you want. But basically, um, with this, I believe you might have an idea of how, um, you know, to work with the if and else statements in a realistic environment. Um, all of this code can be trained down to less lines when you use a loop. Because, um, as you can see, we just simply make an input, then we say if and else, and then input again, if and else, and we repeat that several times. And that's actually, this video also works as an introduction to the next topic, which is loops. So with these guys, I'm going to be finishing up. Um, I hope that you find it helpful. Uh, again, the code is going to be uh, uploaded there in the comments section. I hope you liked it and that it is um, helpful for you. So see you guys on the next video.